If you were to ask, most people would tell you that the limerick is a post-period Irish form. And they would have good cause to say this. And yet, <laughs> there is a period exemplar. For if you look through the pages of Thomas Aquinas there, right around the middle, is one, count them, one, one stanza of five lines in a certain metric meter with a certain rhyme scheme. <laughs> and the Latin is very easy. Twist and turn, though you may, it is a liver. <laughs> now, at times, telling this to a certain sort of laurel, and worse yet, proving it to them, may make their head explode, and that's comedy. <laughs> so if somehow there is at least one period example of a limerick, <coughs> what could have killed it? Perhaps this. <laughs> oh, no. Bayo limerick. <laughs> or how to destroy Anglo-Saxon literature in 10 easy stanzas. <laughs> I love this one. A monster did Merriment vanish, as many a kinsman did vanish from Hrothgar's fair hall when Grendel did call to pick up some fresh breakfast Danish. <laughs> yes, it's going to be that kind of piece. <laughs> Their state was soon sorry indeed, a grimness born out of greed, but this was not caused by the monster's fierce paws, but hangovers and too much mead. <laughs> <laughs> a call then went out far and wide. Please help save these things, Harry Ty Hyde, from the monster's most rude choice of quick takeout food, fresh Viking, raw boiled, or fried. <laughs> <laughs> so Beowulf rode across the sea to help answer Hrothgar's sad plea to lend them his aid and his bright shining blade in making some monster puree. <laughs> Beowulf, being a smarty, watched the thanes as they feasted most hearty. He lay on the floor while the Norsemen did snore and Grendel came crashing the party. <laughs> the hall, which had been gendarmeless, learned the value of not being alarmless. Woke to battle most grim, as foes tore limb from limb, and Grendel was rendered more uh, armless. armless. <laughs> yeah. uh. Ooh, the monster then fled in a funk to the glowing green lake where he bumped. Brave Beowulf gave chase with the men of that place to see to it that Grendel stayed sunk. Danger lurked near the lake, seeming calm where a fresh sword did meet Beo's palm. But he did not know, in the lair of his foe, <laughs> lived the monsters now mad, pissed piss off mob. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Grendel soon met her end, as the fierce Yayat prince he did rend, her poor body in twain. <laughs> then he did it again, just in case she her death did pretend. <laughs> The survivors returned to the hall, cleaned the blood, and for me did call, lifted many a horn till the day's too early morn, where they fell as the drink claimed them all. <laughs>